on this Memorial Day as we honor the true heroes. Molly Karam here in studio with my boys Stephen A. and Max Kellerman. Hi, guys. What's going on? How y'all doing? Good morning. All good. Gentlemen, let's get right into it. King James gets it done on the road with one of his weaker supporting casts, and now it's on to the next one, headed to his eighth straight NBA Finals. He's put up 35, 15, and 9. Max, what does this Game yep. 7 say about LeBron? It says that criticism of him by people like, oh, I don't know, Stephen A. Smith hey. is completely misplaced. Stephen A., I recall you saying last season, before he faced a Warriors team, which had won 73 games and adding Kevin Durant, he sounded defeated. You know, MJ and Kobe would have never sounded like that. That is ridiculous criticism to make of LeBron James. Let this be known. LeBron James never says die. I was prepared today to come out on the air and say, look, I know I said the Celtics are going to win in game seven because they have home court. I can't take a bow for that. You know, I really can't take credit for switching my pick because the Cavs didn't have Kevin Love. And it's too much to ask LeBron James to lead a team without a single other starting caliber player past a very good, young, hungry, improving, excellent defense, you know, really cohesive offense, great coach, star player team in the Boston Celtics. At Boston, it's too much to ask. He didn't even have Kevin Love. But I don't have to say that today because LeBron James actually went on the road and led this Motley crew, a crew that Jeff Van Gundy had to point out was rolling their eyes at each other more than a couple in a bad marriage after two games on the road early in the season. He led this crew past the Celtics after leading them past the Pacers, after leading them past Toronto. These are all good teams, Stephen A. Smith, and he did it not only with a lack of talent, not only with his, se his second best players now in Boston, right? But the second best player on this team wasn't available most of game six and all of game seven. But it's not only that. It's that this Cavs team really doesn't play as a team. It's not just that they don't have as much talent. They're also not a cohesive unit. And LeBron James somehow led them past the Celtics. The criticism of LeBron that somehow he's missing something that, that, that MJ or Kobe had along a couple of things, a litany of uh, errors within your argument, so we'll take them step by step. You know, uh, I, once again, I want to make sure that everybody understands that I came on the show this morning prepared to just uh, uh, heap praise upon LeBron James because he deserves it. He's the greatest player in the world. We know this. He's a generational talent. Uh, he's going to be on the Mount Rushmore of basketball for eternity. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the greatest players that ever lived. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but because Max Kellerman instigated it with his drivel, you know, starting off the show antagonizing me, allow me to come back and respond. First things first, I will never take back what I said about what LeBron James did in last year, at the end of last year's Eastern Conference Finals in Boston, because that is factual. You can sit up there and say whatever you want. I saw it with my own two eyes. Just because he did what he did last night doesn't take away from the concession speech that he gave before last year's NBA Finals, right after they beat Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. That was a concession speech. That's what it was before the finals even began. I said it then. It's a year later. I'll say it now. I ain't taking that back. That's number one. Number two, we look at LeBron James and we talk about, okay, what does this game seven say about LeBron? Yes, it speaks to his greatness. It speaks to his greatness in terms of his conditioning just as much as anything else because he played all 48 minutes. And maybe it would have said a little bit less if Brad Stevens hadn't allowed LeBron James to put Kevin, Jason Tatum in pick and roll situations all night long, which is exactly what LeBron James went wanted against that incredibly talented but very very slim and skinny dude compared to LeBron James. It's exactly what he wanted but we won't belabor that issue. I'll get to a bigger point Max Kellerman and I'll tell you this. You know what the operative word that comes to my mind? Nobody else is going to say it so I guess I'll say it for you since we've done everything but literally uh, pay, you know pave rose petal a rose petal path for him and what have you with this all of this praise that we're going to give him and he deserves it. He deserves it. But 
But let me also say this. One of the greatest gifts that LeBron James has had this year is luck. That's right, L-U-C-K. I'm going to spell it out for you. Luck, okay? What happens? He goes against a baby Indiana Pacers team in the first round. Victor Oladipo, a rising star, but a number one option for the first time in his career. Second round, we all know that, Brian, that LeBron James might as well be Freddy Krueger for Friday the 13th when it comes to the Toronto Raptors. The second they see him, if they're petrified, they're like petrified puppies for crying out loud, Fright night coming at you. They are, I mean, I'm sitting there, Freddy. Now, that's Jason for Friday the 13th. Freddy Krueger was a different story. Forgive me for that. But the point is, you get the picture. So you got that in the second round. Third round comes up, okay? There's no Kyrie Irving, and these youngsters are going at them within the first three games at home, okay? And so, and now, if he got to the finals, and let's say, for example, your pick of the Houston Rockets is right, CP3 in all likelihood would be hobbled. So every single single place you turn, okay? LeBron James, you know what? You, you talk about luck. Hey, listen, there's nothing to take away from his greatness as a player. We understand he's the best of the world. But you know what? With greatness comes luck sometimes. And he's had that too. That's all well, I'm saying. Luck is the, as Branch Rickey said, you know, the GM who helped Jackie Robinson break the color line in baseball, luck is the residue of design. So you can say lucky the Celtics were missing shots. He was lucky they were young. Kyrie got hurt and this and that. Yeah, but LeBron James was right there to take advantage of it, Stephen A. I have I didn't say he wasn't. for you. And, and, and okay. here's the thing that LeBron demonstrated last night. Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal. Magic Johnson, who, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, n just name a guy from the era, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, mm -hmm. none of them were close mm -hmm. to Michael Jordan. He was so much better than those guys, and those are some of the greatest players who ever lived. The distance between Shaq and the next best guy when Jordan retired was like the, di which was a lot, was like the distance between Jordan and Shaq. No one in the universe thought, I wonder if Shaquille O'Neal is as good as Michael Jordan. No one thought that. Jordan put such distance between himself and the league. That's what LeBron James has done. It is ridiculous, in fact, insulting, to compare any player in the world to LeBron James. No one else, no other player in basketball is capable of doing what LeBron just did. KD is coming for LeBron eventually because he's younger, you would think, but to compare the two right now is a joke. You want to compare James Harden or Chris Paul or, or, or Anthony Davis or anyone you mention, no one compares to LeBron. He is lapping the field. So you want to say he got lucky? Okay, things broke his way a, you know, a certain, to a certain degree. Indiana missed some shots. Boston missed some shots. Wasn't it you, Stephen A., who said part of the reason that Toronto will miss shots is because palms get sweaty, right? When LeBron James is but on Toronto. the court, I only said, I only on said, I, I only said that about Toronto. I only said that about Toronto. Didn't it happen with I didn't the Celtics? Say that about anybody didn't else. Didn't it happen with the Celtics? Huh? Didn't you get the feeling watching oh, yeah. the game last night that the Celtic, the baby Celtics, were like, we're not supposed to beat LeBron James, and they started missing shots? Well, well, well. Here's the here's the interesting part about that. You bring that up. Let's analyze that for a second here, Max Kellerman. We have a rookie in Jason Tatum that was showing out somehow, some way. Cavaliers double team your Hall of Famer Al Horford in Game Six. Okay, you needed to be prepared for that in Game Seven. They weren't. Then you have. Terry Rozier and Marcus Smart. Now, we both know these are two miniature Rough Riders. They got a lot of heart. They can play, but neither is no Kyrie Irving. And so Terry Rozier goes 2 of 14 from the field, 0 of 10 from three-point range, pulls a John Starks. You can relate to that from the mid-90s in a championship against the Houston Rockets, okay? A game seven where he shot 2 for 18, 1 for 11 from three-point range. You know that memory, all right? That's what Terry Rozier pulled last night. No disrespect to him. I like the kid. He can play, and he's a rough rider. Just a bad night shooting. Marcus Smart, 1 for 10 shooting, 0 for 4 from 3-point range. Put the numbers together. You got that. 3 of 24 shooting, 0 of 14 from 3-point range. Now, if you, if you expected somebody to fall apart, it was supposed to be the rookie, but the rookie is who showed up. Those with a little bit more experience, and in Al Horford's case, a lot didn't necessarily do that particularly in the second half, and that had a lot to do with it. But I asked one simple question, Max Kevin. Is it possible 
that if Kyrie Irving was healthy, that we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation to this degree? It is possible. It is possible. That's all I'm saying. It's also possible. So, 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 so again, I'm just saying shots. luck. Luck is apropos. Luck is apropos is what I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. LeBron was going to still do what he was going to do. 35, 15, and 9. That's predictable. We know that. But let's not act like some luck wasn't on his side. He got to avoid Even a few a, checks along the way. Let me ask so you I'm this. Saying. Let me ask you this, and I'll leave it like this, okay? Sure. And you can answer however you want. Sure. Didn't you, or I got the feeling last night, I was wondering if you do, that if Rozier would have hit a lot of those shots, LeBron, instead of ending with 35, would have ended with 50. He was going to do what it took to win that game, regardless. No, I didn't get that feeling. No, no, I did it. All right. I, I really did. I looked at Boston wet the bed in terms of, uh, you know, shooting bricks. That's what I saw. Yeah. But props to LeBron and the Cavs for pulling it out. Couldn't make a shot. All right, guys, let's keep it moving and get our first take fam involved first. What do you think? Is LeBron the greatest player? Vote in our Facebook poll right now. And sticking with that narrative, Stephen A., you know the MJ comparisons have ramped up after the series. How close 